The story opens with a young girl named He Chan putting up posters of her missing mother. She enters her house, which feels empty and abandoned, and calls for her mom. But her cries are met with silence, leaving her with little hope. The scene shifts to a museum where children are learning from a guide about how scientists are attempting to change the course of asteroids. Among these kids is the same girl we saw earlier. The scene then returns to her being alone at home, while in the background, a man's desperate cries about the world's end are heard before he tragically ends his life. The small town is buzzing with news about an asteroid that is expected to strike Earth in 2025. With only 201 days remaining before the impact, everyone is anxiously preparing for their lives to change forever. Next, Jin Si Kyung, a middle school teacher, is seen cycling to the field in the dark as the curfew lifts. Despite the circumstances, she continues to exercise and train. Her friends, Yo Mai Ryong and Oh Jai Hyun, tease her for pushing herself too hard. Later, Si Kyung heads home to get ready for her trip to the airport. At the airport, people are saying their emotional farewells to their loved ones. The rich have fled to supposed safe areas, leaving those behind to face a harsh reality of reduced supplies, growing crime, and a sense of hopelessness. Among the families leaving is Ha Yul's family, one of Si Kyung's former students. Si Kyung and Ha Yul's friends are there to say their goodbyes. Before they go into the airport, Ha Yul hands Si Kyung a letter, asking her to open it later when she is alone. After a touching farewell, Si Kyung heads off to work. The scene shifts to 300 days before the asteroid is expected to hit the Earth. The government announces that the asteroid will strike the Korean Peninsula and swiftly imposes national martial law. As anticipated, the declaration causes widespread panic and chaos among the people. Si Kang is worried about her fiancé, Ha Yoon Sang, who is working as a researcher in a lab in the United States. She decides to contact him through a video call. During the call, Yoon Sang is seen hiding from military officers who are conducting a raid on the lab. He assures Si Kyung that he is safe since he is just a lab technician. As Si Kyung updates him on the dire situation back home, Yoon Sang promises he will come back soon. However, Si Kyung advises him not to return, given the circumstances. As they talk, Yoon Sang shows Si Kyung the engagement rings he has bought for their wedding. Moments later, Si Kyung is forced to watch in despair as hostile forces discover Yoon Sang. There is a loud crash when the door bursts open, and just before the connection is lost, Yoon Sang urgently tells Si Kyung to seek help from Father Beak. Following his advice, Si Kyung hurries to the church, but arrives a bit late as the military targets Father Beak, branding the congregants' prayers as an illegal assembly. Despite efforts by the church members and the young priest Wu Sung-yi to persuade the soldiers, Father Beak agrees to go with them willingly. Unable to speak with Father Beak about Yoon Sang, Si Kyung watches as the church members try to re-enter the church, only to be stopped by Sung-yi. Determined, Si Kyung pushes through the crowd, runs into the empty church, and leaves a prayer note on the wall. Elsewhere, the deputy mayor is addressing a crowd, urging them to disregard false reports about selective immigration. As she speaks, criminals escape from jail and spark a full-blown riot on the streets. They abduct people, loading them into vans. Si Kyung witnesses one of her students, Ha Yul being taken and tries to intervene, but ends up getting injured. By the time the authorities find the criminals, most of the victims have already been killed, leaving only piles of shoes for their families to grieve over. Many of the victims were middle school students from the same school, where Si Kyung teaches. Despite everything, Ha Yul is safe, but has been severely injured by the criminals. Currently, 201 days before the meteor strike, Ha Yul's family is at the airport, where her father, Yum Soo Joon, is denied migration by the embassy because of his illegal activities, forcing them to stay behind. Ha Yul isn't surprised by the denial and shares her lack of surprise with her mother. Subsequently, Captain Kang in awe, who leads a combat support battalion, meets with her former battalion commander at the military camp where he now manages the supply of essentials. He shares his worries with Captain in awe, explaining that only immigrants who can provide these necessary goods are being allowed into the safety zone. This situation leaves those who cannot afford such goods with very limited resources. Additionally, Captain Inaw brings up that the military plans to reduce its workforce by discharging many soldiers. Both Captain Inaw and her former commander are concerned that this move will create even more problems. Feeling responsible for the former commander's job loss, Captain Inaw apologizes, but he remains calm and composed about the situation. Park Jin Seo and Yu So Min. Two of Si Kyung's students are seen selling goods on the street in exchange for US dollars or ration tickets. At the same time, a group led by Jin Seo's father is trying to spread their message about eternal life. They believe that the asteroid will mark the beginning of eternal life, but Jin Seo finds his father's preaching quite embarrassing. He decides to leave the area and heads to the military camp to continue their trade. Soon after, Captain Inal arrives at the scene, 
All the soldiers gathered around the kids quickly rush to their posts as she approaches. Since Captain Ana is also a friend of Si Kion, she takes a moment to send Si Kion a text. In the message, she informs Si Kion about the kids' activities and advises her to keep an eye on them. Upon receiving the message, Si Kion heads to the military camp and discovers the kids' painting nearby. She decides to take them with her and asks their mother to pick them up. She advises her to keep an eye on their activities. While in the car, the kids chat about the challenges of living without internet access. They also agree to stop by Hai Yel's house because So Min wants to borrow Hai Yel's bicycle. When they arrive at Hai Yel's house, they discover that Hai Yel's family has not yet left the country. They find the family in the midst of a heated argument, with Su Jun angrily hitting Hai Yel with his shoe. Hai Yel, clearly distressed, pleads with her friend's mother to help her escape from her aggressive father. Despite her parents' calls for her to come inside, Ha Yil refuses to go back into the house. Instead, she decides to leave with her friends and their mother. After Captain Anna notices some soldiers buying items from the kids, she decides to conduct an inspection of the soldiers. Although her superiors initially disagree with her decision, they proceed with the inspection anyway. During the inspection, they find and seize all the traded items. Afterwards, Si Kayan goes to the camp and presents Captain Ana with Ha Yil's letter. In the letter, Ha Yil describes how the man who had kidnapped her and other children has moved in next door. She recognized him right away. Si Kayan hopes that Ana can seek justice for them. Unfortunately, Captain Ana is in a difficult position. Her unit has very limited power, and the firearms they carry are unloaded due to a shortage of ammunition. Additionally, Ina is not well regarded within the military. After an incident where she violated orders and caused an explosion, her superior, who now handles essential supplies for the camp, took the blame and was discharged in her place. Since Captain Ina decides not to get involved, Si Kyung makes her own plan to take revenge on the criminal who kidnapped the school children. She studies the layout of his house and sneaks in during the night, intending to kill him. To her shock, she finds that he is already dead. Panicked, she hurries out of the house, but it looks like someone has seen her. At the church, a sister tries to get into Father Beak's secret room, but fails because she doesn't know the password. The following day, Mai Ryon and Jai Hang observe that Si Kyan appears to be feeling unwell, likely due to the stress from the previous night's events. Concerned for her well-being, Mai Ryon decides to visit Si Kyan with some food. The next morning, Si Kyung sleepwalks to her fiancé's house in search of coffee, only to be gently reminded by So Min that the apartment is empty. So Min then informs her about the death of the criminal, Bi Jong Su. Si Kyung isn't particularly shocked by the news, as she was already aware of it. The media spreads the news of Bi Jong Su's death, and many people celebrate, viewing it as divine punishment for his crimes against the children. Even the kids are pleased by the news. Meanwhile, Jin Seo is trying to make money to cover his rent by selling some videos. He approaches a gang with the videos, and they ask him to bring So Min to them. At the airport, Su Jun tries to find out why his entry into the US was cancelled. He learns that it was due to a violation of the Children and Youth Protection Act. Due to this, he is ineligible to migrate to America. Frustrated by the situation, he leaves the office. At the military camp, Ina grows suspicious about Jong Su's death. It was declared as a suicide, but it was actually a homicide. She heads to the scene to investigate and finds boot prints in and out the house. Outside Si Kyung's office, Jin Seo's father is still campaigning about eternal life. At the same time, Si Kyung sees Jin Seo and asks him to go home. As she watches him leave, she remembers her good days as a teacher and the special bond she had with the children. She showed them her arm tattoos as a personal secret. The deputy mayor then calls her to discuss converting the underground train station into a bunker. During their talk, Ina arrives and interrupts. Outside the station, Ina questions Si Kyan about her involvement in Jong Su's death. She confronts that Si Kyan would be a prime suspect if she were to investigate. Due to her past grudges against him, Si Kyan denies any wrongdoing and points out that many others had reasons to hold a grudge as well. Before Si Kyung leaves, Ina warns her about the criminals, saying that even if one is punished, more of them will always emerge. Reflecting on the previous time, Si Kyung, Yoon Sang, Father Sung Yi, and Ina are seen having a friendly video call. Yoon Sang and Si Kyung keep their relationship strong through these calls, and are excitedly planning their wedding. Si Kyung is also thrilled about the football group she started with the kids. The next day, as the town enjoys watching and playing the football match, everything suddenly changes with the shocking news of an impending asteroid attack. Everyone in the town tries different methods to handle the news. Su Jun and Di Han, the father of one of Si Kyung's students, look for a way to escape the country. They meet with a broker from Toy Tech, who promises them an opportunity to leave and survive the disaster. Although Su Jun is initially skeptical, 
He is eventually persuaded by the broker's charm and starts to see hope in the scheme. Meanwhile, while her father searches for an escape, Hayil spends time with her friends, and they all vent about their fathers. Hayil's anger toward her father is explained in a flashback, where school bullies show her a video of him giving money to a woman. Since then, Hayil has been in conflict with her father. Currently, Ina and her team are transporting supplies to the camp when they come across a broken down transport on the road. Seeing that repairs will take a while, they decide to help by giving the passengers a ride in their supply truck. Among the passengers is Father Sun Yi who tries to tease in awe, but she quickly warns him to stop. As they leave, Yoon Sang arrives in town. Without a passport, he only has a basic document to prove his identity, so the soldiers detain him for further investigation. The JIU confirms his identity, but requires him to check in daily. They also add him to their watch list because they are puzzled about why he would return from the safety of the US, especially considering his profession. That night, Si Kion begins to feel like she is being followed. She bumps into Jin Seo, who mentions that So Min is concerned about her. Si Kion advises him to stay safe and go home, warning him not to be out on the streets at night. Si Kion's suspicions are confirmed when a man is shown watching her from a car as she enters the building. Meanwhile, a man named Oktaki shares his thoughts on why children are being kidnapped. He explains that criminals are looking for people who will obey them, and children make ideal recruits because they can be easily controlled. The man who is following Si Kion gets a phone call, and informs the caller that Zhang Su's phone and other items are missing. He asks the caller to reach out to their manager, M. He then tells him that they need to deal with the girl soon before ending the call. When Si Kain gets home, she examines Zhang Su's phone and tries to understand how the gang operates. She also has his gun and some items she took from his house. As she is working, there is a knock on the door. At first, she hesitates to open it, but when she hears Yoon Sang's voice, she opens the door, and they greet each other with a hug. Si Kain welcomes Yoon Sang home and offers him some food. He tells her about his encounter with the police, who found his return unusual. Looking exhausted, he soon falls asleep. As Si Kion tries to cover him with a blanket, she notices scars on his back but for the time being she lets him rest. She then heads to his apartment, where she had stored her belongings. There, she throws a mannequin out of the window. Meanwhile, He Chan, the young girl introduced at the start of the show, continues saving food in the hope that their mother will return. In a flashback, she and her younger brother, Wu Chan are shown desperately searching for their mother during the early chaos of the crisis. During this turmoil, Mai Ryong's son, one of Si Kaiang's students, was kidnapped and killed. Mai Ryong is still grieving the loss of her son at this point. Mai Ryong's mood brightens when she sees Si Kaiang, who tells her about Yun Sang's arrival and asks if she can provide extra food supplies. Mai Ryong immediately agrees. Si Kaiang also informs Ina on her way. Everyone is thrilled about Yun Sang's return. Father Sun Yi is especially eager and visits the house despite Si Kaiang's request for Yun Sang to rest. As Father Sun Yi arrives at the gate, Mai Ryong also drops off the food supplies. At the same time, Jin Seo, So Min, and Ha Yul show up, and everyone gets excited to see Yun Sang. After creating a lot of noise, they all agree to let Yun Sang rest and leave the building. As they head back, Jin Seo's father puts up a hoarding board in front of the entrance. When a neighbor tells him he can't do that, he ignores her. Jin Seo then tries his best to apologize to the neighbors and starts removing the hoarding boards. At the military camp, the soldiers are thrilled when live chickens appear in their gardens. An army personnel, Ju Yeon takes it upon herself to raise the chickens and submits an official request to build a chicken coop, which is promptly approved. She plans to care for the chickens and help them hatch chicks, aiming to ensure that the military will have a steady supply of protein in the long run. Away from the military camp, Deputy Mayor Sian Ju speaks out for her community during a government hearing. She questions what actions are being taken to evacuate people and manage the rapidly depleting resources. She also remarks that only the wealthy will be able to escape the crisis, while the rest of the community receives no assistance. She challenges the Prime Minister, asking how long they will continue to make empty promises to the public. While some citizens tune into the news, they feel increasingly hopeless about the situation. Mai Ryong, among those who have lost hope, believes that her husband's attempts to find additional resources are futile. She sees their efforts as a waste, given the grim circumstances. Unlike Mai Ryong, Jai Hyun, So Min's mother, remains hopeful that a solution will emerge. Despite So Min's objections, she attends the Toit Tech event with Di Han and Su Jun. The CEO of the tech company quickly raises their hopes, but then reveals the steep price for a seat. He mentions that only 50 people will be accepted, and payment must be made in either dollars or gold. The CEO insists that the down payment is required within two days. Although many people start to complain, 
He explains that they are not being forced to buy tickets. Outside the event, Jin Sia's dad stirs up strong opposition against the tech company, accusing them of being liars and frauds. He rallies his supporters and warns the public about the company's deceitful practices. Eventually, he and his team push their way into the event, leading to a violent confrontation. The fight breaks out as Jin Sio's dad's group clashes fiercely with the tech company's security team, resulting in chaos. Back at Si Kion's residence, Yoon Sang wakes up from a nightmare and decides to head to his apartment. While he is tidying up his room, Father Sun Yi happens to be walking down the same street. Noticing Yoon Sang, Father Sun Yi stops by to welcome him home. He has many questions for Yoon Sang and keeps asking them one after another. Despite Sun Yi's persistent inquiries, Yoon Sang remains silent and continues with his chores. As Father Sun Yi leaves, Yoon Sang continues with his chores. He then heads to the bathroom, lifts up his shirt, and screams in pain. It is revealed that he has an object embedded in his chest, emitting a red, flickering light. The scene transitions to a flashback of when he was captured by the military in the US. He was subjected to brutal torture in an attempt to extract information. Despite the severe beating and bleeding, he did not disclose the details they were seeking. Following the chaotic event of the tech company, Su Jun returns home, where his wife takes care of his injuries. He tries to instruct Hyul to stay away from Jin Seo because of his father's actions at the event, but she refuses to listen. Meanwhile, So Min criticizes her mother for attending the event, expressing her frustration and disappointment. Later that night, Si Kyum's friends invite her to hang out, but she declines and decides to head home. When she arrives at the parking lot, she discovers that her bicycle is missing. After searching for a while, she finds it hanging in a bar, damaged. The back tire, which used to display a picture of her with her school kids, now bears a note that reads, I will make things fun for you. Though shaken, Si Kyun returns home and puts on a brave face for Yoon Sang, who surprises her by having cleaned her apartment. He greets her warmly, and she pretends everything is fine. Worried about John Su's belongings, Si Kyun quickly heads to her room under the pretense of changing clothes. Finding the item safely tucked under the bed, she returns to Yoon Sang. After a brief, casual conversation, they share a passionate kiss, and Yoon Sang decides to stay over for the night. While there, Yoon Sang discovers some chloroform and questions Si Kyun about it. She claims she used it during the riots, but he suspects there is more to the story. Yoon Sang senses that something is wrong and says he will wait until she is ready to tell him the truth. The next morning, the elderly villagers gather in the garden, planting and gossiping about the recent events. They are surprised to learn that Yoon Sang has returned, but this news gives them hope that escaping from South Korea might still be possible. Meanwhile, So Min receives a threatening message from a gang member of Jong Su, concerned for her cousins. He Chan and Wu Chan, who are staying with them, she decides to visit Si Kyung at her office. So Min warns Si Kyung to stay vigilant, and shows her the threatening messages. Later that night, Yoon Sang and Si Kyung have dinner with friends to celebrate his return. Inna remains worried about Si Kyung, and makes an effort to check on her. Yoon Sang gives a simplified account of how he managed to escape from the US. Mai Ryong praises Yoon Sang's return as a stroke of good fortune, and suggests that he and Si Kyung should get married. As the evening progresses, Si Kyung receives a message that visibly disturbs her. She quickly borrows the church sister's car, claiming she has a work emergency. Yoon Sang, concerned about her sudden departure, is reassured by an awe, who tells him not to worry, as it is just an urgent work matter. Meanwhile, So Min is being threatened by the gang to whom they used to sell videos and other items. As the tension rises, Si Kyung frantically searches for So Min in the darkened streets, heightening the sense of urgency and danger. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave 1000 likes or 100 comments if you'd like us to continue part 2. Thank you.